Warning, this episode contains spoilers for the show, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. But seriously, if you haven't seen that show yet, it's your own fault. Either way, consider yourself warned. Halloween is almost here. I hope you found a really sincere pumpkin patch because in this episode, I'm going to explain why It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown is a true horror story. Don't believe me? Then stick around. And while you're here, don't forget to click subscribe so you can get updates whenever Garfield Memorial Church uploads a new video. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you don't, tell me why in the comments. <laughs> It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, has a really long title for a cartoon that lasts only 25 minutes. Yes, it's a children's show, though adults love it too. And yes, it's hilariously funny, but it's also a true horror movie. Really? Okay, maybe not really, but really? Why do I say that? Well, first of all, there's at least one brutal murder and dismemberment in this show. Kill it. But more than that, and yes, there is more than that, the Great Pumpkin touches on some of the deepest fears of human beings and uses some of humanity's cruelest weapons. What are those fears? Well, the first one is invisibility. And no, I'm not talking about Susan Storm kind of invisibility. That would be just stinking awesome. I'm talking about the kind of invisibility in which you are unnoticed by the people around you. The kind of invisibility in which people simply are indifferent to or unaware of your existence. Charlie Brown faced this throughout Tricks or Treats. I got five pieces of candy. I got a chocolate bar. I got a quarter. I got a rock. Gee, I got a candy bar. Boy, I got three cookies. Hey, I got a package of gum. I got a rock. I got a popcorn ball. I got a fudge bar. I got a pack of gum. I got a rock. This was the great fear that plagued Arthur Fleck in the 2019 horror thriller The Joker. It's the fear that haunts high schoolers as they sit down at lunch day after day after day by themselves and walk through the halls at school without anyone ever saying, hi, how are you? It's the fear that whispers in the ears of men and women who sit in cubicles or work on assembly lines or in nursing homes or who live alone and tell themselves, if you died tomorrow, no one would even notice or care. It's the kind of fear that leads people to do horrific things to themselves or others just to be noticed or to prove that their life matters. The second fear follows on the heels of the first, and that's the fear of rejection. Charlie and Linus experience this one a lot. Hey, I got an invitation to a Halloween party. Is the invitation to Violet's party, Charlie Brown? Yes, it's the first time I've ever been invited to a party. Charlie Brown, if you got an invitation, it was a mistake. There were two lists, Charlie Brown. One to invite and one not to invite. You must have been put on the wrong list. That stupid blockhead of a brother of mine is out in the pumpkin patch making his yearly fool of himself. Boy, is he strange. Some people who are invisible are tragically glad to be invisible. They fear that if they're noticed, they would be rejected anyway, and they prefer the relative security of invisibility to the danger of active rejection. We can go back to Arthur Fleck, a.k.a. the Joker, to see this in action, too. Fleck was so invisible that he didn't even get junk mail. He'd begun to wonder whether he even really existed. When he finally was noticed, though, he was publicly shamed and humiliated and rejected. The third fear that we see in The Great Pumpkin is the one that the story gives the most attention to. It's the fear of misplaced faith. Halloween is over and I've missed it! You blockhead! You kept me up all night waiting for the great pumpkin. And all that came was a beagle! I didn't get a chance to go out for tricks or treats! And it was all your fault! All through! What a fool I was! I could have had candy, apples, and gum! And cookies and money and all sorts of things! But no! I had to listen to you, you blockhead. What a fool I was. Now, we can all laugh at Linus's childish belief in the Great Pumpkin and Sally foolishly following her crush in that belief. But the fear of putting our faith in the wrong person or thing is real. 
The anxiety of wondering whether you've put your faith in the wrong person or thing can be crippling. Whether it's the wife who fears that the husband she put her faith in may be cheating on her, or the employee who changed companies following a leader that may not be who they thought they were, or the voter who after the election begins to see the person behind the PR, or the city that is continually disappointed by the latest coach or quarterback who was supposed to save the franchise. The fear is real and it's deep. This fear may reach its most profound levels in the arena of religious faith. Jesus' disciples had put their faith in him. They left everything to follow him. Then he was publicly tortured and publicly executed in the most humiliating way, and they were convinced that they had misplaced their faith. What could they do but fearfully hide behind locked doors? Now, it's easy to say the disciples were wrong to be afraid because we know what happens next in the story. But think of the person who takes a great risk because they believe God called them to do it, and then everything falls apart. Or the person who prays for their child to be healed, but their child dies anyway. Or for the person who prays for their business, but their business goes bankrupt anyway. There is a reason why more people don't take extravagant risks out of faith in God. They're afraid. The fourth fear is related to this one, and it's the fear of not being good enough. If the great pumpkin comes, I'll still put in a good word for you. Good grief. I said if. I meant when he comes. I'm doomed. One little slip like that can cause a great pumpkin to pass you by. Linus is convinced that he has to earn the favor of the great pumpkin and that nothing less than perfection will cause the great pumpkin to visit him. This is another of the great fears of religious faith. God didn't answer my prayer. I can't believe that God doesn't exist or that God is powerless or faithless, so it must be that I'm not good enough. I've done something wrong. If only I were good enough, then God would be here with me. When it comes to our relationship with God, the Christian faith has much to say on this. Let go of your fear. Of course you're not good enough to earn God's love. Nobody is. But we don't have to be good enough because we don't have to earn God's love. God loves us. God loves you so much that he came in the middle of our mess and died for us while we were still broken. We may break faith with God, but God will never break faith with us. This fear isn't limited to religious faith, though. Think of that boy who believes if he were only better at sports, then his dad would love him. The girl who believes if she could only get better grades, then her mom would approve of her. And there's that woman who's convinced that if she were only thinner, the man she loves would love her back. Or the man who believes that if he were only richer, he could finally win the woman of his dreams. We can laugh at Linus, but I think our laughter is at some level nervous laughter. Because that fear of not being good enough for who or whatever, that fear runs very deep indeed. Where there is fear, there's usually anger and violence. The children in the world of Charlie Brown don't wield machetes or guns or chainsaws, but they wield two weapons with ruthless efficiency, words and laughter. Has a great pumpkin been by? <laughs> what blockhead sitting in a pumpkin patch in the middle of the night? You've missed trick or treat and now you're going to miss the Halloween party. What a way to spend Halloween. <laughs> Anyone who has ever been the perpetrator or victim of verbal bullying or verbal abuse knows that words hurt. The old adage that sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never harm me is nonsense. Now, I know this next part is a little or maybe a lot twisted, but one of my favorite horrifying use of words in the Charlie Brown universe comes not from the Great Pumpkin but from the Charlie Brown Christmas special. One child thrashes Charlie Brown with this, of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. In one fell swoop, she uses words to slash at Charlie Brown's and many of our greatest fears. She rejects Charlie utterly and completely. She makes his entire identity an insult while dismissing him as the least of the least and the worst of the worst. You're nothing, she says, and what little you might be is worthless. I never noticed the brutality of these words or other insults and peanuts until I was an adult with kids of my own. As a kid, I just laughed at the cartoon and pitied poor Charlie Brown, but words are far too often used as weapons with devastating effect on children and adults. The second weapon employed by the Peanuts is laughter. 
If you want to discredit someone or something, laugh at it. If you want to humiliate someone, laugh at them. Scorn, contempt, and derision delivered through laughter, especially if you can get the crowd to join in the laughter, is at least as powerful a weapon as hateful words. That words and laughter are so easily weaponized should not surprise us, for our enemy Satan delights in taking gifts of God and twisting them into instruments of destruction. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength, but the devil leads people to take joy in scorning others. Even more profoundly, the Bible says that God used words to create, and Jesus himself is described as the Word of God. What God uses to bring subtle and sublime beauty into being, Satan uses to wreak havoc. The Word of God was spoken in love and brings redemption and hope, but devilish forces use words to enslave and humiliate. So, do you believe me now that the great pumpkin Charlie Brown is a true horror story? If not, that's okay. I don't blame you. It's just so darn cute and funny. But I hope you see the depth and the danger behind the cuteness. I hope you will put your faith in Jesus, even if all others may fail you. And I hope you use the breath that God has given you to speak words that build up others. And I hope that when you laugh, your laughter will bring joy, true joy, and hope into the lives of the most fearful people around you. Anything else would be horrifying. Thank you for watching this episode. Before you go, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you didn't like the episode, let me know why in the comments. In the next episode, we're going to dig one level deeper into the Charlie Brown universe and see one more true horror story that's completely invisible to some and painfully obvious to others. Until then, keep listening to stories and keep telling yours. <laughs>